Good evening and welcome. Thank you for joining us tonight. I am Father Jack Tierney, one of your two Masters of Ceremony for this first ever Midwest Augustinian virtual Christmas celebration. With me tonight is my co-host, Catherine Hennessy, an affiliate of the Order and a member of our Province Advancement Council. Welcome to a night of great music, greetings, and Christmas-tide messages from across the province. Before we introduce tonight's program, please listen to these opening remarks and a prayer from our prior provincial, Father Tony Pizzo. Greetings. On behalf of all the friars of the Midwest Augustinian province of our Mother Good Council, I am happy to welcome you this evening to our first ever virtual Christmas celebration. Over the next hour, you will get a chance to hear from a few of our friars, friends, and benefactors. Enjoy some Christmas music and also have the opportunity to call in and speak with one of us and share your prayer intentions for the Christmas season. We are gathered here virtually today on the third Sunday of Advent, known as Gaudete Sunday, from the Latin word meaning rejoice. The first word of the entrance antiphon of this Sunday, which says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Indeed, the Lord is here. Today, we take a pause from the penitential spirit of Advent to gladden our hearts and take up the joy of expectancy. We are, each of us, asked by the church to become prophets, proclaiming Christ's incarnation to a world suffering from division, inequality, disease, and climate catastrophe. We are asked to be consoling to all those who grieve. And in that spirit, I want to take you in my heart this evening, those of you who may be experiencing pain and grief, and let you know that all of us as Augustinians are here for you, to accompany you in thought and prayer. So please, reach out to us tonight by phone. The phone numbers of the Friars available will be scrolling at the bottom of the screen throughout our broadcast. In today's Gospel, we hear John the Baptist offer us the consolation that we need, the good news that Christ is coming, and indeed He's already come, to baptize us with the Holy Spirit and fire that he brings a winnowing fan to clear out the chaff of sin and death from our soul, calling us to create a more just world. Sisters and brothers, God's love for us has been proven by how high a place he has given us in the midst of creation. And this is one of the greater teachings that St. Augustine offers us when he says, by appearing as one of us, God has lifted up our humanity. Do not let it be weighed down with too many worries. Gaudete Sunday is a perfect day for us to hold this event, as we have a truly joy-filled program in store for you. Before we begin, however, I also want to extend an invitation for all of you and your families to join us in person this next Saturday, December 18th at St. Jude Parish in New Lenox, where our province will be sponsoring and celebrating the ordinations of two of our brothers, Deacon Joe Rocaselva and Deacon Jeff Raths. The service will be held at 10 a.m. Secondly, I hope you will join us as well for our Augustinian Gala at the Drake Hotel in Chicago on April 22nd, 2022, when we honor Father Fred Taggart, Ed and Catherine Hennessy, along with a posthumous recognition for Father John Gaffney, who served at Cashel Hall in Tulsa, Oklahoma for many years. Now, please join me in an opening prayer. Lord God, we give you thanks and praise for the gift of Christ Jesus in our lives. May the gift of the incarnation, which reminds us that all of us share in communion with you, with Christ Jesus and the Spirit that continues to guide and direct our hearts that we may continue to be prophets in this world and witnesses of your love and mercy. For we make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessings. Thank you, Father Tony. I will introduce myself and then Catherine will do the same. My name is Father Jack Tierney. I grew up in Wisconsin and originally I met the Augustinians on the internet. 
Currently, I serve as the chaplain at St. Rita High School in Chicago, and I teach theology. I teach morality to juniors, so I do my very, very best to teach teenage boys right from wrong. Catherine? Hi, I'm Catherine Hennessy. Uh, I'm a member of the Midwest Augustinian Advancement Council, and I've been involved in fundraising with the Augustinians since 1994 when I met my husband. The, and the Hennessy family has been involved with uh, fundraising for the Augustinians since the early 1960s, supporting the Chilicanus mission, uh, in, missions in Peru. During this evening, you will hear some great music from Augustinians and Christmas time greetings and messages from people all over the province. This is a time of joyful hope. This is from our heart to yours, and we hope you enjoy it. Now, before hearing the greeting from our Crown Point community, I want to let you know that you are able to call and speak with some of our men at any time during our program tonight. Their numbers are scrolling below your screen, and if you wish to make a gift during the evening, you can go to the Donate button on your screen and tell one of the Augustinians when you call. And now for our greeting from the Crown Point community from Brother Jack Hibber. Stop. Good evening. I'm Brother Jack Hibbard, and it's my privilege to wish you a very Merry Christmas. On behalf of the Augustinian Friars at our retirement community, plus the Stephen Bellasini Friary, in Crown Point, Indiana. As prior to the community, I am one of three members of our province health care team, along with Father Michael O'Connor, serving as our health care director, and Brother Mark Emkin, who is our community treasurer. Together we are responsible for assessing the individual health needs of the elder friars who reside at St. Anthony Majestic and making sure that each one is receiving the medical and spiritual care that they all deserve. As you know, the ongoing COVID pandemic has made this task all the more difficult. I am happy to report that our men have all been vaccinated and have been uh, returning to somewhat of a normal life. And just recently, they also received their booster shots. As we look forward to celebrating the coming of our Lord, we also recognize that the Christmas season can be a somber time for many who have recently lost family members and friends. The Augustinian family has certainly had to say farewell to some extraordinary friars over the past year. And I would like to take this moment to remember Father Jerry Neese, Father Ronald Scheibel, Father Jim Thompson, Father Edward Kirsten, Brother John Patrick Currier, and Father Carl Gersbach. These men represent hundreds of years of ministry to our schools, our parishes, hospitals, and to the Augustinian communities. They were dear friends and brothers. I remember them in my prayers this time of year and I ask you to please do the same. We also like to remember the people, the members of our community who are currently uh, living at St. Anthony Majestic. Like Father Jerry Heyman, Father Ed Andrews, Father Jim Sheridan, Father Reinhard Sterneman, Brother Angelo Stern. We're all living in the assisted living unit. Also for Father Donald Bates, Father John Flynn, Father Jim Friedel, Father Richard Palmer, Father David Petritus, Brother Larry Sparacino, Father John Zura, who are all in the skilled care unit. And in the independent limit of that unit, Father Fred Taggart, Father Don Lewandowski, Brother Fred Kaiser, along with Brother Mark Emkin, and Father Mike O'Connor and myself. We encourage you to possibly come out for a visit, maybe make a phone call, or just send a card. I'm sure our men would certainly appreciate that. We are very grateful for your prayers and your financial support. No matter how simply and modestly we try to live here in Crown Point, it has its costs, which I know you can appreciate. We could not do this without you. 
So on behalf of all our friars at Crown Point and all the members of the Stephen Bellasini Friary, I wish you a very blessed Christmas and a happy and holy new year. Thank you, Brother Jack. As you may know, earlier this year, the Augustinians opened a new pre-novitiate community at St. Clair of Montefalco Parish in Chicago. Coming next, you'll hear from the prior there, Father Tom McCarthy, who will then introduce the three pre-novices in formation. And then you will hear some great music brought to you courtesy of our very own Deacon Joe Rocasalva, Brother Spencer Thomas, and pre-novice David Marshall. Hi, my name is Father Tom McCarthy. I'm the prior of the St. Clair of Monte Falco pre novitiate community. I'm sitting here with the community. It's a new community that was founded in August of this year to service our first year men in formation. We call them pre-novices. And this is a year-long process of learning what we do as Augustinians. They are involved in ministry at, here at the parish at St. Rita parish in Chicago and St. Clair Montefalco Chapel. They are involved in uh, serving mass and music ministry, in training servers, teaching religious ed, and in the RCIA program. Also they're at St. Rita High School two days a week working in very different aspects of the schools and uh, they are there together and learning how that ministry of schools work for us. And so we live in community, we pray, we have Mass, we pray for you, our benefactors, and we're so grateful to everyone who has helped make this a reality. So we wish you all a very, very blessed Advent season and a very Merry Christmas. Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Brother Paul Kostoniak. I'm the other side of the uh, Augustinian vocation. Some are priests and some are brothers. I'm one of the brothers. I'm kind of, uh, and I think in terms of uh, how long I've been in the order, well, I first entered in 1957 and uh, then took some time off and uh, re-entered sometime later. I uh, have had to spend most of my life uh, teaching ministry in one way or another. My role here at uh, St. Clair is uh, primarily procurator. It's kind of a fancy word for the one uh, the bill stops here. The buck doesn't stop here, but the bill definitely does. And bills have to be paid, have to make sure that that's taken care of. Other expenses of the house uh, uh, that are incurred, grocery shopping and so forth, that's primarily my uh, responsibility. And uh, like the whole church, uh, right now looking forward to the Advent season and the Christmas season, and certainly I wish all of our friends of the Augustinians uh, a very uh, grace-filled Advent and a very peace-filled Christmas. Hello, my name is Father Ray Flores. I'm the director here for the Prenovitiate program, and it gives me great pleasure to introduce our three students, Mr. Connor Fitzmorris, Mr. David Marshall, and Mr. Nathan Fernandez and each of them will now introduce themselves. My name is Connor Fitzmorris. Uh, I'm from the city of Columbia, and that's in Missouri. And I've been very blessed in my journey to discover the Augustinians. Um, I found them online, like so many vocations nowadays come. Uh, and this pre novitiate program has been a great experience because of the opportunities that we have to work in the ministry that the Augustinians do and really be a part of the order through our ministry, uh, whether it be at the high school or at the parish. So I'm very blessed and grateful to be here and for the opportunity to be formed. Thank you. Hi, I'm David Marshall. Uh, I'm from Dayton, Ohio originally, and I, did, I come from a background in music, did my undergrad and master's in music, and really happy to be here um, where I've been doing a lot of ministry with the high school, teaching band and theory, and with the parishes doing music ministry there. Um, it's great being here with the guys, with the prayer life and, and the music integrated into life and everything. I'm really happy to be here. Hi, my name is Nathan Fernandez, and I'm from Canada, Toronto. And I was with the diocese for five years in Toronto uh, in their seminary. And I took some time off, and I worked for the Augustinians in Canada at Mary Lake, which is their monastery up in, up in Toronto. And there I got to learn more about religious life, and I eventually fell in love with Augustinian spirituality and the way that they live out religious life. 
And by the grace of God, I, I applied and I was accepted uh, into the pre-novitiate. And now I'm very thankful that I'm able to learn and more about what it is to be an Augustinian and to discern if this is what God's really calling me to do. Again, on behalf of our community here at St. Clair, we are very grateful for your support of our way of life. We have morning mass at St. Clair Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and know that you're always welcome to attend with us, pray with us, and, and accompany us in that prayer that is so special to us. God bless you and Merry Christmas. Venite adoremus, venite adoremus, venite adoremus, Domino, adeste fidelis, leti triumphantes, Father John Leiden, who directs the seminarian formation for our Peruvian vocations in the city of Trujillo. Greetings to all of our benefactors for the Augustinian missions here in Peru. Um, my name is Father John Leiden. I'm an Augustinian, um, originally from Toronto, Canada. Uh, and uh, entered the Augustinians in the Villanova province and came to Peru immediately after finishing my formation. So I've been in Peru for uh, 38 years. First in our mission in Chulcanes in, in St. Joseph the Worker, San Jose Obrero Parish. Um, then I had two and a half years in Rome to do doctoral studies and then became a teacher at the seminary in, in Trujillo, Peru. 
uh, where I've been a teacher uh, since uh, 1991. Um, after 20 years in the seminary, I was pastor of our parish on a fishing port uh, called Pacas Mayo, a couple of hours north of Trujillo, and then have returned to Trujillo to work at the Catholic University of Trujillo. That's a brief uh, resume of, of my time here in Peru. It, it, it's always been possible because of the generosity of our uh, benefactors in the United States, those who have supported our missions uh, here in Peru for all these uh, years since our founding uh, in 1964. It's been for me a, a great pleasure to be here, um, to minister uh, in, in this poor country now ravaged uh, through the pandemic, uh, Peru uh, occupies, uh, sadly, the, the first uh, place on the list of the number of deaths because uh, as a percent of their percentage of their population uh, from the coronavirus. Uh, and that's basically because of the very poor health care system that we have here and the lack of oxygen. Many, many people died simply because there was no oxygen. And so um, I, I, our presence here is dependent on, on the generosity of our benefactors. Um, we work towards the making Peru an independent uh, missionary endeavor. There's very few of us from uh, the American provinces that still left here. There's only two of us. All the rest, uh, 27 uh, friars in total for our mission area uh, of Chubucanas, the Vicariate of St. John the Saogun, uh, are Peruvians. And that's a great blessing uh, that uh, the missionary effort has borne fruit. And, and now all of the major roles are carried on by the Peruvians. It's a time of, of blessings uh, for us all as we come close to the celebration of Christmas uh, when Christ uh, overcomes all darkness, uh, his birth at, at midnight, according to our traditions, uh, underscores that his light is more uh, powerful than the, the deepest darkness of the night. And that is our hope and that is what we bring forth here in our work in our missions. So I want to send to you uh, Christmas greetings, my prayers and best wishes for you and for all of your family, that the Lord continue to shower you with his grace for your generosity, that he continue to protect you uh, in these times of the pandemic, uh, and that this Christmas be a celebration of great joy and the victory uh, of light over darkness. And that strength gives us also the ability to move forward uh, and to believe and work for his kingdom. Ha a Merry Christmas to you all. Feliz Navidad a todos y, y bendiciones a todos ustedes. Many thanks. Muchas gracias. Thank you, Father Leiden. Remember, please, if you wish to speak to an Augustinian tonight, to share a Christmas greeting, to ask us questions, to offer a prayer intention, or to make a gift, please call us. The numbers are on the screen. Our next greeting comes to us from Father Bill Lego, the pastor of St. Terribius Parish, where I served as a deacon. And so, Father Bill. Hi, I'm Father Bill Lego. I'm a member of the Augustinian Midwest Province of our Mother Good Council. And during this Christmas time in which we're celebrating the birth of the Lord, I invite us all to reflect upon this year and how the Lord has been born into our lives during this difficult time of COVID and being shut down. And it's always good to reflect upon the new birth that happens when we have a new child in our family. The world centers around that. And it also at time calls us to reflect on what does it mean to care for new life in our midst. And as we know, part of that new life at times when we are uh, celebrating the new birth. There is sometimes suffering because people do different things and we've had a very serious time during this year, but the birth of the Lord calls us to celebrate his presence in such a way that we see it as a life-giving opportunity, a thing to be together in communion with brothers and sisters as the Augustinians in our province live together in community and we share that with our people. 
we invite you to share the communion you have in your home during this Christmas time. May our Lord be with you and have a very blessed Christmas. Thank you, Father Bill. It's always a pleasure to work with you and your fellow Augustinians. As a member of the Lay Volunteer Province Advancement Council that has assisted the province with communications and fundraising for about 10 years now, I am happy to introduce a greeting from our Advancement Council Chairman, Marty Wojak in Arizona, and a St. Augustine Seminary alum, Joe Brennan. After we hear from Marty and Joe, we will enjoy some more Augustinian seasonal music. Hi, my name is Martin Wojcik, and I'm calling from Tempe, Arizona. And that is where I now live. I am a former Chicagoan. And uh, I got to know the Augustinians many years ago uh, when I was a student at Mendel High School. And Mendel is gone, unfortunately, but the Augustinians are still with us. And I've stayed the course with the Augustinians because I think they add real, real substance to education and spirituality. And uh, I'm proud now to be a volunteer and a friend of the Augustinians and a donor to the Augustinians. And uh, I want to thank you on behalf of the uh, Midwest Augustinian Advancement Council, of which I'm chair, for your enthusiasm and your support and your friendship to the Augustinians. I'd also, in this message, like to say, I wish you and your families a joyous holiday season and a healthy and prosperous 2022. Thanks. At this very special time of year, on behalf of the Augustinian Seminary Alumni Association, I'd like to wish everyone a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. What Great Voices! Deacon Joe Roccasalva is one of those three friars bringing you this wonderful Christmas music this evening. Deacon Joe is preparing for his ordination to the priesthood 
this upcoming weekend at St. Jude Parish in New Lenox. He will be joined in ordination with our brother, Deacon Jeff Raths, who has been serving as a deacon at St. Bernard Parish in Homer Glen. I invite all of you to please join us in person at St. Jude Parish in New Lenox this weekend, this upcoming Saturday at 10 a.m. to welcome two new priests to the province. The parish will also live stream this service at stjudes.org if you're not able to make the trip. In anticipation of this ordination, the Augustinian Vocation Office has prepared a video highlighting the solemn profession of Brother Joe and Brother Jeff that they made this summer at St. Rita Parish. The two were also joined in their profession by Father Ray Flores, whom you will hear from as well. And there was just this kind of loss. She's like, no one ever asked. And so I remember that. And, and I think it's our responsibility, even if they say no or not yet, or but at least the person has been asked. So I think part of our job is, is to ask, you know, how is God inviting you to serve the church? It really wasn't until I went to college and I, I started having a, a calling that I had when I was a kid again to the priesthood. My campus minister from my high school said, but make sure that you discern all ways of life, both the priesthood and religious life. But after discernment, I realized that the diocesan life wasn't for me. So there's a great quote from Augustine. He says, I have become a puzzle unto myself. So maybe the three pieces of the puzzle that come together are community, mission, and purpose. Uh, but they all take a sense of risk. So it was a risk to, to leave diocesan life. It was a risk to leave what was familiar and, and to go on to something that was different. And, and yet I felt called. I felt called to do that. And so as I've come to become an Augustinian friar, the, the pieces fit so well together. Community, mission, and purpose. Um, we, we in a community work together, we pray together, we live together, we have fun together. Right? Something that was missing has been complete. So it's, it's this common life uh, that we live. We try to live one heart, one mind, intent upon God. I knew I needed to be in community with others. More and more that family aspect, that restlessness really came through and really drew me closer and closer to knowing that this was the right decision. We're grateful to all three of you, Ray, Joe, and Jeff, for responding generously to this particular call to live the evangelical counsels for the rest of your lives with us. We seek and worship God and work for the service of his people. It requires a deep and abiding love for Jesus Christ, who walks with us and suffers with us and graces us so that we become channels of grace for one another. And so we congratulate you, Ray and Joe and Jeff. So thank you and welcome to our family for good. One, one of the um, biggest symbols uh, for us is that prostration on the floor with the Litany of the Saints being uh, sung by not only a cantor, but the whole community. So we're invoking our brothers and sisters in faith who have gone before us, and we're asking them to pray for us. In response, as they are praying for us, I on the floor with my hands out in the cruciform was praying for them for my family, for my friends that were there, for all that's going on in the world. It was all coming up at that point. This physical representation or manifestation that we're laying down our life uh, for the service of God and God's people. This past year has been hard for many of us and keeping that in my head was of that moment. It's profession is not about me, it's about the church, it's about the world. Um, and it's, it, I need to always, we always need to remind ourselves that our calling to this life is not about us, it's about God working in the world. It, it, it's incredible to know that people in the church as well as 
heaven and earth come together and, and they're all praying in this common way for us. Signed, sealed, and delivered. What, what I might say is if there's a person that is thinking about the possibility of religious life is don't be afraid to ask or don't be afraid to uh, discern or don't be afraid to see it as a, as a life option. It's so inspirational to hear these young men talk about their faith, their calling, and their dedication to the Augustinian way of life. It gives me great hope for our future. As a member of the Midwest Augustinian Advancement Council, we are honored to support these young men in their calling. And the council regularly looks to cultivate the next generation of lay supporters among our parishioners and alumni. This year, we are delighted to add a new council member, Dominic Sanfilippo, an alum of Providence Catholic High School and a former director of Christian service at St. Augustine High School in San Diego, California. Our Providence communications team was able to sit down with Dominic earlier this year for an interview as he talked about how the Augustinians transformed his life and why he felt called to give back. I'm Dom Sanfilippo, member of the Augustinian Advancement Council, and I first encountered the Augustinians in 2008 at Providence Catholic High School. My whole professional career and educational career, you can really root it in a lot of the lessons learned about becoming a community builder at Providence. And I can, you can trace a lot of that to the, you know, the values and the charism of the Augustinians. In chapter 19 of the City of God, Augustine famously says, you know, you can judge a community based on their common loves. And at Providence Catholic, a love of justice, a love of searching for truth, um, a love of joyfulness and small moments, funny moments, um, and a love of sharing in the ordinary graces of community. It's something that having Augustinians in the school as teachers, as educators, as mentors, as role models really hammers home. Uh, my career has sort of evolved at the intersection of education and civics. I've served in public roles at different municipal uh, level government, state government, interning out in Washington, D.C. And as an educator in several uh, different states, now in the Chicagoland area, teaching theology and civics, my passion is really to help students meet each other where they are and find common ground um, and encounter each other very fully in the nuance and the wonder and the joyfulness of themselves and trying to articulate what it is then to go out from the classroom into the community, into a world that's looking for justice building and peace building and try to do that together. Um, and I, a lot of my joyfulness and my passion as an educator um, can be traced back to some of those very same conversations in the halls at Providence Catholic with the Augustinians. Um, as a student coming out of the high schools, I think people often have this powerful experience that might change their trajectory of life. You know, I had a, you know, I made some of the best friends in my life. I learned what it meant to give back. I learned what it meant to be part of something larger than myself. And when you step out of that and you graduate and you go wherever it is you're going to go, you know, for study, for work, maybe you move, you find that you're part of just larger and larger circles of community. And something like the province um, is a network and a community of people that in all their various vocations, you know, whether it be teaching, ministry, finance, all of their various vocations serve that goal. And every time someone says, I want to give back to something larger than myself, this larger community unit, not only within you know, the city of Chicago, but the Midwest and North America and globally. Um, it's a ripple effect like a stone in a pond that has unforeseen consequences. So, you know, somebody's wide-eyed wonder in the classroom at a place like Providence or St. Rita is directly tied to somebody else contributing their time or talent or resources to making something like that possible. Um, we're part of you know, a ripple effect far greater than any one of us. And for me, you know, coming out of college, um, becoming a young professional, you know, seeing all the different ways one can connect in society, this seems like a really valuable way to spend time and to grow, not only to grow as a person, but you know, to feel part of a cause that is aimed toward community. If we can look for 
the various truths of our lives and say, I'm not in this alone. I'm not in this journey alone. In fact, I am made more myself when I allow myself to be vulnerable and be full in community. That is a deeply Augustinian value. Um, and it's something that I think students, no matter what they get involved in at the Augustinian high schools like Providence, um, it's something that is imprinted with them and that they take with them then wherever they go in life. When an opportunity came up to sort of get involved a little more formally and help uh, possibly join the team at the Advancement Council, I didn't really hesitate because it's giving back and sort of staying connected in a way that allowed me to have some of the positive experiences I had as a student. Thank you, Dominic. That was so moving to hear from such a recent alum. We really do have a rich and diverse Augustinian family. To round out our evening here is a message from Father Bernie Siena, a respected friar from our province doing his good work at Villanova University. Father Bernie will be followed by our final musical number. We hope you enjoy. Greetings for a joyful Christmas season. At my ordination 28 years ago this November 12th, Bishop John McNabb ended his homily by saying, and above all, live a joyful life. I've taken those words seriously for the last 28 years and I've done my best to live a joyful life, even in the midst of challenges and struggles. Pope Francis recently said that joy is the confident assurance of the presence of God, which is exactly what we celebrate in this great feast of the Nativity. Emmanuel, God with us. And so in the name of Bishop McNabb and Pope Francis and all of the Augustinians, I wish you a joyful Christmas and ask that you share joy to the world. Sing we now of Christmas, sing we hear Noel. Noel, Noel, let Noel chantons you sing. Sing we now of Christmas, no one sing we hear. Sing our grateful praises to the child so dear. Sing we know well, the King is born no well. Sing we now of Christmas, sing we hear no well. Angels go to shepherds, leave your flocks and grass. Journey forth to Bethlehem, find the infant glass. Hi, my name is Brother Nick Malarkey, and I'm a friar and teacher here at Casha Hall in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Just want to wish you a blessed and wonderful Advent season and Christmas season as we celebrate the coming of Christ 2,000 years ago in history, his coming now in mystery, and his coming at the end of time in majesty. May you be filled with the consolation and peace of Christ, and may you have a wonderful 2022. God bless. Thank you for joining us tonight. 
you will be in the hearts and prayers of all Augustinians during the Advent season and Christmas season. Thank you for being a part of our family. We are grateful to each and every one of you. We promise to do our best to extend the heart and the spirit and the ministries of the Midwest Augustinians to the fullest extent possible. God bless you. And a very Merry Christmas and New Year from your community of Midwest Augustinians.